Good morning, I'm Morgan of MorganDonner.com and this is my third video showing how I am on my journey to create the red Miss Maisel dress. This is my second mock-up, which fits much better than my first one, and I'm relatively satisfied with how it looks. It could use some, some tweaks to make it a little bit better, but if this ends up being my final, we're doing pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and move on to working on the skirt. So here I've got some more of my mock-up fabric that I used to make the bodice, and I'm going to use this to drape the skirt. I've done some preliminary cuts that I think will be about right. First off, I rounded out the top of the skirt, and then I've got a cut down the side here, just a little bit, taking like kind of a narrow triangle off, because it's going to end up being a little bit of an A-line skirt as a finished product. The original dress definitely has a side seam. So let's go ahead and start draping that on. So let's go ahead and toss a pin in that. There we go. She does have a pleat in the front here, but it doesn't seem to me like it's a terribly deep pleat. You know, a couple inches deep, maybe. So I'll go ahead and pin it with that in mind, and we'll see whether or not that ends up looking right when we're done. There we go. And then I'm going to do that same pleat in reverse. So we're going to pleat it back in on itself here. There we go. Oh, oh, I took out the wrong pin. Let's leave that one alone. Okay. Pin. Pin. All right. Let that drape a little bit better. And then it comes to the other side. There we go. I think that I need a little bit more of a sharp angle to my A-line seam, because right now it's pretty gentle of a cut. I think we need to make that more dramatic, because if you look at it this way, in theory, if you uh, look at her skirt, it's, it's got some petticoats underneath, it sort of fluffs out a little bit, and if I try to fluff this out, this seam, instead of staying nice and next to her side, suddenly wants to go out that way. It just means that there's not enough there. So let's go ahead and just unpick this. So I'm going to go ahead and just use the whole width of the fabric this time instead of trying to be a little bit more frugal. I'm going to go ahead and have the center of the fabric pinned to her approximate center. I'll fold in that pleat that I know we need. Oh, too big. Let's Take it in a little bit. There we go. That's about right. Same for the other side here. There we go. That's looking pretty cute. Okay. So our front seam is in place. We're going to pin up the side body here. Pin. I think I'm going to go ahead and toss a petticoat on my little lady here to help give me a better visual sense of whether or not I have enough fabric to be able to support a petticoat underneath the dress. So let me go find that. Success! I found my skirt. We'll see what this looks like on my dress dummy and whether or not I think it's going to help or hinder. That's looking pretty cute, guys. Like, it's not really a complicated skirt with, you know, a super uh, complex detailed drape. It doesn't do any crazy swoopy things. It's a, it's a pretty easy one, but you still want to try and get it right. It looks like the angle, if I am trying to look down the side of the, the dress here, Looks like this is about the angle I need. It doesn't hurt to toss in a little bit of extra flare, just in case. So I'm going to go ahead and pin this. Before I cut this off to create my hem, let's go double check our reference and make sure that I'm cutting it off at the right spot. Alright, so I've got my length in mind now. I know that it's going to be a little bit past the knees. Next up, I'm going to cut the excess length with scissors. Aha! We're going to cut this with 
loose excess. So let me do that real quick. So here's the last of my mock-up fabric. I went ahead and cut my back so it has a slight swoop just like the top waist of the front part of the skirt. And I went ahead and also cut off the excess uh, triangular bit down here that I in theory shouldn't need. This is kind of funny because I can't just simply pin it here and continue following the waistline of my dress dummy because it'll be too small for me. And I'm going to pin this to the top of my dress again. There we go. Okay. So this tells me how much extra I have to play with, which looks like I've got, I've got a pretty fair amount here to work with. Let's go ahead and get this pinned in. Now, remember, the back is almost kind of the opposite of the front, because instead of pleating the top inwards, creating two pleats back here, it's the opposite. It has one pleat, All right, I, it's still technically two pleats, it's just that they close in on each other, so it visually kind of looks like one as a finished product. We'll get that pinned in place here. With a bit of ironing, this would end up looking like one sort of pleat. Let's go ahead and get rid of our excess here since it is just kind of visually in the way. Oh, oh goodness. Well, she just got a lot shorter. Let's go ahead and boost her back up to Morgan Donner height. Oh no. I've completely taken out the screw that holds her in. Why is she not moving up? Ah, uh, maybe? Haha! <laughs> Ooh, look, she's so tall. That's fine. It'll just make it easier to work on. I'm going to take the skirt off the dress dummy now and get all the side seams sewn up and pin it back in place to see if everything is still looking good. All of these parts that I very jaggedly cut off, I'll straighten those out so that we have a fairly good, accurate, final thing. My skirt is assembled, so now I'm going to sew the skirt to the bodice. There we go. All that's looking pretty good. Now because I am sewing the wrap front to my skirt here, I'm no longer going to be able to get into this by just entering through the wrap front, which I knew from the beginning was a false front. We were just kind of using it as a, an easy fitting entrance. So for our final creation, the center back needs to be our actual opening. I'm going to go ahead and cut this open. I could just go get a seam ripper, but What's the fun in that? Uh, we don't need to be careful. No. That might lead to more pattern success, but meh. Why be successful when you can be fast? I'm just going to go ahead and kind of cut straight down that. There we go. That should give me enough room to fit into this. Come on, open up. But before I sew that zipper on, let me go ahead and get this waist seam in place. Okie doke, time to sew in our zipper. I have it right side out right now, so I do need to flip it, but eventually the idea is that the zipper will be here and will zip all the way down to here. Let's go ahead and tear that off. 
And now that our zipper is very messily in place. Oh, oh no. Well, damn it. My zipper is all done and sewn up and reattached. And I've sewn the top here so that I can't accidentally take it off again. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this a quick try on. All right, so I went ahead and tried it on, including adding the fluffy petticoat to fill it out. It feels very big, but I think part of that is just the fact that I don't normally wear petticoats, so everything with a petticoat feels way too big. I think it's okay, it just looks weird because I'm not used to it. The waist I think is probably a little bit too high, but everything fits really nicely. It feels good, nothing feels terribly constricting. Let me give you a quick tour around. So we've got the front, and the back. My belt is in place, and dresses just look so much cuter with a belt, am I right? Uh, this definitely makes it look longer, which makes it look proportionately a lot more <laughs> like Mrs. Basil's dress, which is great. I'll need to go get some fabric to make my final dress out of. Actually, my biggest consideration whenever I go to the store and pick out my final fabric is this belt, because I do want to use this one. This is the closest thing I've got to Mrs. Maisel's belt in her dress. That about wraps it up for this video, so join me next time where I definitely start working on the final dress.